Here's where we're fishing. Nice gravelly, sandy beach. It gets sandier, obviously, the farther out you go. Um, so I have sea worms, or sorry, sandworms. Um, the other people call them sea worms around here. So sandworms. Um, there's also blood worms you can get, but I'll show you the sea worms that I'm using. And I also have clam that I'm going to cut into small strips and put on my rig for flounder. So let's see, I'm using 10 foot rods, uh, nothing crazy, 20 pound braid. Just chuck those baits really far. And I have my rod pod over there, it's my carp rod, because I know over here I cannot um, drive those stakes into the ground for my other rod holder. So here's the rig that I tied up. So at the top barrel swivel, I think it's a size 10, more than enough to hold a flounder. Um, it's essentially a dropper loop with two loops on it. And um, I tied up these short sections of flounder rig right here. Normally you buy these Chestertown hooks in packs of 10. Let me show you what they look like. So you buy these little guys and I cut them up and make them my own. So a long, 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 long section of 20 pounds rig, the main branch, um, two dropper loops on it. So this branch is probably two and a half, three feet long. Um, so I could spread out the dropper loop so when you cast it and then you set the rod down, um, both hooks will be on the seafloor to catch flounder. So um, let's see, as far as the branches, so like I said, I cut down the flounder hook, Chestertown hook right there. Um, then I have this little all-purpose hook, I believe it's a size 10 on there and that's just to hold the nose of the sea worm on there from sliding up and down when you cast it because when you're chucking from distance or even when you're out in a boat um, there's nothing more frustrating to see you're see seeing your bait balled up at the end of your your um, hook because obviously the flounder are going to have a hard time with it a um, little bead on there for attraction and then there's my little blood knot um, and essentially i tied it as a dropper loop and i just snipped the loop off itself and that just prevents the hook from sliding up near the loop and getting tangled. Um, this is a pretty short section. It's maybe seven, eight inches long, so nothing crazy. So when you're tying this rig, you want to make sure that these hooks are not going to touch when you cast it. So as you can see, there's maybe it's about two inches of space between the hooks if it were to, for some reason, come in contact. Say this got tangled down here, but um, yeah, plenty of space. And then same thing with the top hook. You want to make sure it's spaced far enough away from the swivel so when you're casting it does not get tangled. Um, so all right, let's get some sea worms on there. Sorry, sand worms. On there, and let's get cooking. All right, guys, so this is your sand worm, aka sea worm. So if you look at these guys, they're segmented. Um, there's also blood worms, which are smooth. These guys have teeth. I don't know if you can, see, if you'll show them or not, but sometimes you touch up there, and they'll come out. So these things hurt a little bit. They're not crazy, but um, they give a good little pinch. So with that all-purpose hook, you're gonna hook through the nose of the sea worm, and then you're gonna thread the rest of it onto your Chestertown hook. So you have the sea worm, and then clam, which I'll cut up in a second. So let me get the sea worm on first, just to show you guys. So it's going to take that piece of paper off. So got the nose of the sea worm on here. So what you do, ow. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I see his little mouth come out. He's not going to do it. Maybe he will. Uh, ow! Woo! See, he's biting. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So when you're using this all-purpose hook setup that I'm using, um, Start the Chestertown hook first. Start about three quarters of an inch down on his belly. Press. And thread that baby on there. You don't need to use the whole sea worm on there. You don't have to. All right, break off the extra. I like to leave about a half an inch. Still trying to bite me. 
And then you take this all-purpose hook. So the toughest part on this worm is the mouth. So you put it through his mouth. You just try to bite me. Perfect opportunity. Hook it through there. And that's it. That's all you do. So now when you chuck this thing out, it's not going to get all... He's not going to slide down the hook. All right, let me show you this clam setup that I'm going to use on the top. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you how to thread this clam strip of clam on quick. Thin strips, nothing too big or too wide. So the same thing, or fold it over on itself and then put the hook through. And then you just thread this bad boy up the hook. And you're just sort of looping it over on itself and hooking it. And that keeps it nice and straight. And then put your all-purpose hook through there. I don't know why they don't put uh, bait keepers on these flounder hooks. So that is really it. That's all you do. And now we check this out. And I put a size, or sorry, two on sinker on there. So another thing I forgot to mention with the rig. So make sure your hook itself is lower than the sinker. Just like that. That's all you need to do. And we're going to check this thing out. So you got to put some gusto into it to chuck it. And that's why I use the all-purpose hook on there. Just to keep it from balling up when you cast. That's it. Alright guys, so that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. So it was just a pretty simple um just overview of the rig that I use for surf casting for flounder. You don't have to use, you don't, you don't have to set it up exactly like I do. Um, the reason why I like this is because there's always definitely one hook on the bottom for the flounder. And then with the angle, if you're, especially if you're surf casting from, sh from a beach, the top hook will be on the bottom considering the angle that your, um, the rod tips at. So it's pretty simple fishing. Um, like I said, you can tweak the rig. You don't have to use the same hooks. You can adjust this rig to use for other species, like when you're going for, say, like scup or tataga, that type of thing. Um, it's It could be a pretty universal rig, just change out the hook. So um, didn't obviously catch any flounder in this video. I've used this rig a bunch of times from piers in Quincy, and I have caught flounder on it just fine. Um, it doesn't, I've never really had it tangle. The only time it tangles is when like a spider crab walks through it or a skate gets on it and tangles it up or another thing, sea perch, um, they'll do zigzags and screw everything up. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video or at least found it entertaining. Please give a like and subscribe and I'll be getting out there soon for stripers and try and finish up this flounder video. So I plan on it being about 20, 25 minutes. So, all right guys, thank you. Bye.